Hello. <laughs> Namaste. Bright blessings. Um, Hotep, Alafia, uh, all of that good stuff. I'm Akasha Indigo Ray and welcome back to my channel. And I wanted to pick up with our chakra series. Um, and we are on the second chakra, which is the sacral chakra. And forgive me if I pop off to have some sparkling water. It is almost nine o'clock at night and it's literally still about 90 degrees outside here in Sacramento. It is extremely hot. So I'm drinking this bubbly, buble. It's too hot for tea. Buble, bubbly. It's good. I mix the, I like to mix them together. So I'm having the grapefruit mixed with the cranberry. And I added a splash of lemon. Very tasty. I've got my little familiars hanging out. They are bumping the camera and having a good time with that. So hopefully uh, they won't knock the tripod over. Um, while we make this video. So, okay, sacral chakra. It is ruled by water. It's found in the seat of the reproductive organs. So all of your groin area, your nether regions, your reproductive organs. Um, yeah, so all of the reproductive and the basically the, uh, the sexy parts, the private area, that is uh, your sacral chakra. That's where that energy is housed. The color associated with the sacral chakra is orange and it rules creativity, sexuality, reproduction, emotional expression. From this chakra, we merge with the divine through sexual expression such as orgasm. So sacral, we associate that with sacred. So that's why a lot of pagans and um, new age spiritual practitioners do see sex as sacred union um, because it involves the sacral area, which, or the sacral chakra, which ha also has a connection to the third eye. So they are connected um, in being able to vision, being able to um, be spiritually awake it's the transmuted energy of the sacral chakra arises here in the third eye. So there's nothing, the lower chakras, the, the three chakras um, below the heart are not bad. Not one chakra is bad. They all rule different aspects of our lives. The three chakras below the heart are related to our material life. So they are physical expressions of the higher three chakras, which are, um, spiritual expressions so that's all um, sacred sexuality is healthy and teaches us to identify and connect with the divinity in our partners and within ourselves so ever notice when you are making love with somebody or even just being romantic with somebody kissing making out being close with someone else when you feel um, there is a point when you're really connected to another being where you stop thinking a bunch of thoughts, right? Like the thinking mind stops running around. You stop plotting and planning and wondering what they're thinking about you and all of that. And you're just connected to feeling. That's why this rules the emotions and the feeling, right? You get into this zone where you just connect. That's sacred union. When you're no longer hustling something, I don't mean to say hustling, but like, you know what I mean, when you're dating or you're in a relationship with someone or what have you, sometimes sexuality can be used um, in a way that's purely physical, which is fine. But then there's another aspect of it that's purely connective. It's about tapping into these higher realms through our bodies, which is sacral, which was which, which is sacred, right? Sacral. Um, tapping into that energy, being able to access it in our partner teaches us to see each other as divine as well, as divine seats of divinity, of deity. Um, and it doesn't matter whether you are woman and man, cisgendered, transgendered, female to male, male to male, female to female, it doesn't matter. 
um, we all are expressions of the divine and we all have both expressions of divine masculinity and divine femininity within our being, within our personality um, and within our expression. We may express one gender over the other, but our sacredness combines both. Um, and I would say that I probably express more femininity, right? But there's also masculinity within me. And someone else may be female, but express more of a masculine um, divine energy based on the way that they feel and what is their dominant or predominant um, spiritual and physical expression. But they also have divine femininity within this, the same for, ma for, for males as well. So that's just a little side note that none of this has anything to do with gender when we talk about sacred sexuality or the way we express ourselves or how we connect with the divine through each other. Um, you can absolutely experience um, a divine feminine aspect in connection with um, a man who is absolutely cisgendered and expresses masculinity. You could definitely connect to a more sensitive, um, more um, devotional and softer um, part of that man when you're in union with him when you're in sacred union, when his walls are down, when he's not um, trying to project anything and there's just connection. That's what we mean when we say sacred sexuality. Excuse me, <laughs> that's the bubbly water. When we talk about sacred sexuality, we're talking about union that is not um, trying to be anything or trying to control perception or trying to express something in particular. It's just coming out it's just the essence of you that sacred union when you get to that place with another individual where you can see the God in them and they can see the God in you and it's just a feeling the best part of of any kind of orgasmic experience is when there is a blending in such a way where you stop thinking and you're just being Okay, so pleasure isn't bad. Um, it can be very sacred, um, depending on how you see it and how you find it in another person. And sorry I'm messing with the hair so much. It just, <sighs> just kind of snagging on my necklace there. So, um, and forgive me, I'm looking at some notes because I wanted to stay on topic. <laughs> my Gemini-ness has been all over the place with Mercury going direct. It honestly has had the opposite effect on me where I'm feeling a little like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Jasper be careful he's playing by the candle okay so we also carry deep emotional um, wounding we carry past hurts in the chakra we carry trauma women especially need to work on balance here um, because we have a womb so we are um, the space in which life develops so whether or not you choose to have a child doesn't matter but life the possibility of life still exists in you um, as a female person so being able to work on that energy and keep that chakra clear and keep your womb healed um, I totally did a lot of womb healing work just to deal with past trauma um, and I'm not pregnant and I don't have children but doing that work is just, it's an entry place um, for women to cleanse and remove um, negative stimuli and past hurts and all of that stuff. Um, so um, during conception, during pregnancy and post birth is a, is a good time to do a lot of uh, sacral chakra work. Um, to ensure, as I said, that the energy that you are holding life in is uh, clear and provides an open gateway for that soul to develop um, or to, to, to have like full union in its healthy form um, with its body developing in you. There's a lot of transference of energy that occurs during pregnancy. Um, so you wanna make sure that 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 you are keeping that energy as clear and pure and 
holy as possible. And I don't mean holy in a religious way. I mean holy in terms of you're feeling whole and being in a state of union with yourself. Um, and especially, I would say, after birth as well, because there's been a long gestational period where you were sharing symbiosis with another being who was feeding off of you. Like, literally you being a physical impact where like somebody has to feed off of you to live and then they are released from your body and there's a lot of um, shift in women energetically when that baby has left the womb and now that womb is like closing in and healing itself and expelling um, all of the fluid um, the amniotic fluid and the sac and all of that stuff um, I don't mean to say stuff, but you know what I mean. Like all of that physical matter also carries spiritual energy. And so that leaving the body, we want to replace that energy with wholeness and healing and um, a lot of love and tenderness and take a lot of care over ourselves. Pregnant or not, but that's if you are a person who has given birth or who has tried to conceive um, or who has had miscarriages or um, abortions, etc. Any kind of energy going in and out of the womb, that's a great uh, entryway or a great moment to take and send a lot of cleansing, healing energy to the sacral chakra. So also think of any emotional wounding that you experience. If you're having a lot of fights with your partner, this is for men and women. If you're having a lot of fights with your partner, if you're having a lot of um, uh, negative energy surrounding you, if you're getting in a lot of like fights with other people, verbal arguments with other people, um, all of that energy has to go somewhere. And think about um, when you step into a live body of water, the water reacts to you putting your body in it. It ripples and forms in a different way around you because it's now including you as a part of its body. It's the same with our bodies. We are over 70% water. And water ruling the sacral chakra takes on a lot of energy. So all of that energy around you, positive and negative, gets stored somewhere. So when there are negative experiences, if you've gone to, through a really rough breakup, um, there can be a lot of stored um, karmic energy in the sacral chakra that you want to release. Jasper? What? I'm making my video. Sorry. Okay. Um, no, don't do that, baby. Okay. So, a balanced sacral chakra uh, what you can experience if your sacral chakra is in balance. You will feel inspired and creative, emotionally balanced. You may have a powerful expression of feelings. And when we say feelings, I'm gonna come back to that. So being receptive, yet having healthy boundaries, setting healthy boundaries is a part of the sacral chakra. Um, you'll feel and express romantic desire in a healthy way towards healthy experiences. And when I say healthy, I'm not putting any kind of judgment on the way in which you express your sensuality or your sexuality or who you connect with. I'm just talking about what feels healthy for you. And you know the difference when you're having an experience with someone that feels desirable and healthy and it's something that you enjoy versus when you are saying yes just because it's what's expected of you or when you are giving in to somebody else's desires um, when you may not be feeling like it or feeling good or whatever it is, right? So we're t when we talk about healthy sexuality and healthy boundaries, we're talking about e experiencing a balanced, um, loving and tender or even just fun. But as long as you are emotionally connected to what's happening and you feel okay with it, that's healthy. Um, so I wanna come back to feelings. So one thing that I've noticed that's become a part of our um, cultural lexicon is saying the phrase, I feel like. I only wanna to touch on this really briefly because 
Notice this in your own speech when you tell someone, especially during emotional conversations, right? During relationship conversations, conversations with family and, and friends, and you say things such as, I feel like you don't listen to me. So that's not taking a really strong stance. That's using a simile to kind of express what you feel. If you feel like a person is not listening to you, then that's when you put your boundary down and you say, hey, I don't feel heard. I don't feel like you are listening to me. That's very different than I feel like you don't listen to me. Do you understand? So this is something I'm trying to catch myself in doing as well because it's something that we do conversationally, but words have power. Phrases have power and that does diminish your ability to set really strong healthy boundaries when you don't use strong language, when you don't use powerful language. So that's what you will experience in a healthy um, or a balanced sacral chakra. So an imbalanced sacral chakra. If your sacral chakra is off or there's some negative energy caught up in there or it's the spin is going how we did, uh, how I showed you the pendulum works. Um, for me that counterclockwise is imbalanced and clockwise is balanced if you're getting that counterclockwise spin or If it's before you've done any kind of reading These are some of the things you might experience that will tell you. Oh, maybe my sacral chakra is a little off So feeling drained and lethargic low energy Having a low libido or an excessive libido. So either being hyper or hypo sexual um, being preoccupied with sex and porn and um, uh, that those kinds of expressions of sexuality. And I'm not expressing any kind of judgment here, but you know the difference when you're doing something for fun, when you're preoccupied with it, right? When you're doing it all of the time, when you're literally waking up and masturbating because you just cause, right? That's a, that becomes a preoccupation, that's a compulsion. That's not the same as, feeling some sort of desire to connect with yourself or another being. That's a compulsion. When you're just doing something mindlessly or just being gravitated to something without a lot of thought about why you're doing it or feeling connected to what you're doing, especially we're talking about a feeling chakra. So um, if you're experiencing, for, for females, if you're experiencing vaginal dryness that, and yes, some people will say, well, that could be hormonal, but remember, this is a holistic, organic system. So everything that you're experiencing physically has a spiritual cause as well, or has a spiritual um, uh, or a metaphysical way in which it can be treated. So you might experience something that feels very physical, but it can have other indications. The physical expression of it can be creating an, an imbalance as well. So they feed into each other. Um, for males, I would say difficulty in maintaining erection or um, having erection, losing desire during sexual expression. Um, okay. Oh, so um, using one's sexuality and desirableness to control or dominate others. So if you are, you know, purposely using your sexuality, like. Maybe somebody that might have borderline personality as well. So you're using your sexuality to get something from other people um, that isn't about a genuine connection with them. That would be an imbalance. Depression, negative self-image, that's all imbalance in the sacral chakra. Exceeding one's capacity to be an emotional support system for others. That goes back to that healthy boundaries. When you're saying yes just because it's expected but it's not what you feel, it's not what you want to be doing. Um, empaths can really fall into sacral chakra imbalance very easily because we tend to take on other people's emotions during um, conversations. So somebody's telling you something negative that happened to them and they're asking for help, they're asking for support, but it may not be something that you actually are able or have the capacity to help them with right now, but you're doing it anyway because they've asked you to. You're gonna experience sacral chakra drain. So yes, I am moving <laughs> because my battery is getting low. So I am going to attempt to not lose traction and just plug in the phone. So picking up. Some things that you can do to restore the health of your sacral chakra. And this can be done ongoing. It doesn't have to be when you notice that you're off. 
you can actually have a practice where you just do this on an ongoing manner. Think about it this way. There are seven days of the week. And if we're going with the days of the week, I, I can add that in later at the end of the series. But if we're going from bottom to top or top to bottom, however we want to see that, Monday, moon day um, would be the third eye. The third eye connects with the sacral chakra as well. So you could do work on the sacral chakra on Monday. You could do work on the sacral chakra on any day of the week that feels right to you. But since there are seven days, if you want, you could pick a day for each chakra and um, do work on the root on Sunday and the sacral on Monday and the um, navel on Tuesday, which makes a lot of sense because Mars rules Tuesday. I'm getting off, but this is something to think about to add that into your, your, your daily meditation practice to specifically say on Monday, send energy to the sacral chakra and visualize that. Um, I like to do a meditation where I think about uh, a white light uh, because white is considered to be holy and pure. My practice is, is kemetic mostly, so there's a lot of using white for purity. And just visualize that white light flowing towards your sacral chakra and kind of clearing out any negative energy until you can start to visualize a really bright, glowing orange. Like I like to think of the color of like mandarin or like those little cutie oranges, right? really bright really um like that burst of like sour but sweet taste when it hits your tongue um and because i cast circle in all seven directions um when i cast or call in the western waters i specifically visualize the waters from the west flowing into my sacral chakra and I hold that energy and I hold that space for that till I feel energy moving in in that chakra so that's one of the things that's important is when you do these kinds of visualizations you have to stick with it and hold the energy long enough to actually feel the sensations in the body or in that area that's letting you know that on a on the psychic plane on the astral plane, you are doing that work. It is affecting you. That's how you send Reiki to yourself. It's through visualization, through energy manipulation. Say hi. Hi. I'm almost done. Okay. That's Jasper. No, don't chew it. Okay. So some crystals that you can work with on an ongoing basis to keep the chakra clear, or you can put directly on the sh that chakra area when you want to clear that energy or cleanse that energy. Sunstone, crab fire agate, aquamarine, and jasper. So now the sunstone and the crab fire agate do actually have that orangey kind of color to them. The crab fire agate is uh, a combination of orange and white. But aquamarine is blue, and um, aqua, aqua, that's so hard to say right now, aquamarine is specifically connected to water. Um, and when you look at it, it kind of gives you that, that vibration or that, that picture of a really, um, really light blue ocean water rolling over white sand. That's the kind of color of aquamarine. And so that very much works with the sacral chakra, not necessarily in color, but in energy. Um, and Jasper, Jasper is generally, ah, sorry, she thought I was calling her. Jasper is um, a stone um, that kind of has a marble color in it. So it has a couple of different inclusions in terms of color. Um, you'll see red, you'll see orange, or like a copper colored, a rust color. Um, brown and like a grayish, grayish tone in there as well so it kind of has multiple colors um, but there is a pretty um, a pretty warm 
rusty red and that's what kind of brings it more into um, the sacral chakra coloring um so you can lay down and you can put um, the crystals one or more of them you can put them and if you don't have specific crystals don't worry about it you can totally use um, clear quartz for any of these chakras clear quartz is very powerful for bringing clarity and removing negative energy um, it's a cleansing stone which is why you can put clear quartz in a bowl with other um, crystals to cleanse them as well um, you could use selenite selenite is very good for um, healing chakras so if you don't have a lot of colorful crystals and stones you can use the clear stones to help clear energy it's the intention that's more important than it having to be these exact stones um, the mantra that you can use while you're doing chakra um, cleansing work on the sacral chakra is I am divine so when we say I am divine we're connecting specifically with the energy or the thought I should say the thought that um, my body is divine my body is holy my body is perfect my body is the physical seat of divinity I am holding space for the divine feminine within my body or the divine masculine within my body there's nothing wrong with my body we have a tendency in our society um, to in the human society I think to um, constantly have something negative to be saying about our bodies my body is to this or it's to that or it's not enough of this or enough of that or the Protestant idea that um, you know sex is dirty or that sex is only used for procreation and touching the body is dirty and the body being naked or having other people see the body naked like all of that fear and degradation towards the body think about it how much water is in your body so every time you think something negative about yourself or you accept some idea that there's something dirty and bad about your body you are introducing that vibration into literally just water <laughs> behind your skin you're just pouring that right from your thoughts right into your body and you become a product of your thoughts so the more negative energy you send toward yourself the more you're going to express a state of imbalance so by saying I am the divine with these crystals on that chakra um, you are not just clearing that energy but you are replacing any negative um, energy there you're replacing any negative thoughts that you've taken on any trauma that you've held on to memories where people said bad things to you about your body or criticized you or you know slapped your hands because you you know said something about your body or touched your body in some kind of way all of that shaming around the body lives there as trauma so we can start to clear that energy by saying mantras like I am divine I am the physical incarnation of divinity I am a living representation of the divine feminine or divine masculine I am perfect and perfectly made um, so another thing that women can do is vaginal steams um, if you've heard anything about this I'm sure you have if you're on, if you're on the YouTube's and you're on this channel vaginal steaming is a way to um, use herbs to cleanse energy but also physical uh, matter from the body so um, you usually get like a uh, the water is not supposed to be super super hot but basically you warm up waters just enough that there is steam coming off of it and there are different herbs you can buy um, you can buy kits to do this I've seen them on Amazon I've seen them on Etsy uh, and it's usually an herbal mix but you can also make your own but you just want to make sure that the herbs you're using are safe to be um, coming in contact with you know think about your vagina is literally just an open oven <laughs> so you don't want to put stuff in there that's not supposed to be in there um, through the steam because it is going to open up that energy so I've, I've heard of people using rose petals 
um, lavender. I have not done this myself, but it is on my list of things to do. I heard it's actually very relaxing. But you're basically gonna sit over um, kind of what looks like a toilet, but not really a toilet, kind of like a bucket with a toilet seat. And there's then there's the, um, the hot water and the herbs will be in there and you sit over it for a determined amount of time with maybe a little towel over your legs and you just allow that steam and those herbs to go in and to massage and tone the uterus and remove toxins and um, it's supposed to be really great. I wish I could say that I had done this. I haven't done it, but it, it is something that I'm looking to do, looking into doing as well. And there are a lot of videos here on YouTube of, of other women who have done vaginal steaming and recommend that. So check that out. Um, men can work with intention, um, or I'm sorry, definitely intention, but also men can work with retention of the seminal fluids. So the opposite things happen in, in sexual expression with women and in, um, women tend to have more internal orgasms men tend to have more external orgasms so um there are women who absolutely have external um lots 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 of, of us but um we think more about men you know having an external expression to uh, feeling pleasure and in uh, yogic traditions that can be seen as losing energy so there is a form of um, uh, not not engaging in sexuality called brahmacharya and people who take a vow of brahmacharya either for life or for a particular amount of time are doing a lot of work to transmute that energy towards the third eye towards um, spiritual enlightenment and so it's believed that as men lose these fluids um, the, those fluids, because they contain the seed of life, of future life, um, they can be retained um, to, to transmute that energy into higher use or higher consciousness. Um, and so that would, that would be something to look into around Tantra and Tantric practice. Um, and Tantra is way bigger than sex. <laughs> it's, it's, inner, it's an energetic practice. So there's breathing techniques, there's movement, there's yoga flow, there's um, sensuality, there's dance. A lot of things are involved in Tantra. But for this specific thing that we're talking about right now, um, it would be not expelling those fluids, if you know what I'm saying. So being able to connect, but holding enough mental um, presence to not express and to continue to send that energy right back up the stupa um, which is the energetic spine um, towards enlightenment towards awakening so um, and both um, and all sexes all genders can use uh, masturbation or self um, connection as a way to um, bring balance and healing to the chakra but remember we don't want to be in a state of overdoing something compulsively we want to be doing something with intention that is going to bring health and healing to the sacral chakra all right we're wrapping up here so energy cleansing baths to remove negative energy would include frankincense uh, frankincense is a very holy um, uh, essential oil patchouli is good for cleansing but it's also good for um, attracting positive energy and abundance lavender is good for the senses for calming calming the mind um, and bringing in a softer more sensual um, more relaxed um, feeling in the body which is why we find a lot of um, bath products that contain lavender because they're calming they're very relaxing so that's a good way also to relax that energy. So the last thing I want to say about the sacral chakra um, is you can absolutely use the diet to do this. So eating orange foods and orange beverages that are natural. So we're not talking about eating like, you know, a slice of orange cake. Um, things like bell peppers that are orange, those orange bell peppers, carrots, 
all of the oranges uh, in varieties. So mandarins, cuties, um, navel oranges, grapefruit would also be considered a part of this family. Um, mangoes, I love mangoes, papaya. So all of that, just think about the uh, pumpkin, right? Um, adding cinnamon to things. So just think about the natural foods around you and natural foods that have more of an orangey or peachy color would be connected to balancing the sacral chakra. So we can treat the body several ways. We can treat the body um, aromatherapeutically with essential oils and baths. We can treat the body um, uh, medicinally with foods. We can treat the body energetically with touch and um, stimuli but the main thing to remember is what you do every day has a buildup of effect so if you are engaging in a lot of um, sex for sex sake if you are watching a ton of porn if you are um, I don't know trying to dominate other people um, trying to control others like all of that stuff experiencing trauma um, you know having heartbreak all of that stuff starts to create um, holes little microscopic energetic holes in the chakra and you can continue to clear that energy out and refill those holes so whenever we cleanse we also want to replace that energy so we don't just want to move stuff out we also want to bring back in energy that heals that chakra. So that's where the meditation and um, the uh, color visualization and intention setting and mantra, that's where that brings that energy back in. So we first want to cleanse and then we want to replace. Anytime you sage your home, after you sage, you want to go and add a blessing back in, right? Because we're removing everything. So you can go back around with Palo Santo or Sweetgrass or something of that nature and bring positive energy back in. So I'm going to wrap up there and say thank you so much for joining me. And again, I apologize. I really didn't anticipate um, having so much time elapse between the root chakra and the sacral chakra. I just had a lot of things going on so I'm hoping to be back next Monday and really solidify this schedule um, it seems to be that Mondays might work a little better for me than Sundays but neither here nor there I will be back um, either next week or the week after to talk about the navel chakra so um, hit the notification bell that's the best way to get notified when I uh, get my get my inspiration on and get my face back in front of this camera. But um, I am enjoying sharing this series with you all, and it's been um, a very important and impactful part of my practice to um, do chakra work. And I hope that these suggestions help, and that you're able to um, do this work for yourself. And if you would like to have me do a chakra cleansing for you, a distant chakra cleansing for you, I'd be happy to help you with that. Um, just feel free to send me a message and all of my um, social media will be in the description bar below. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of your week. I hope you had a wonderful Lunasa and that you are starting to harvest in all of that good positive energy and... That's you.